Coming up on Inside California Education, Community Colleges. You don't need your own horse, you don't need your own saddle, uh, you don't need your own rope is provided for you and they set you up for success. Visit a community college in the small mountain town of Quincy where students can earn a four-year bachelor's degree in ranch management. Meet students in Torrance who are the first in their family to go to college. They're getting extra support from a campus-wide initiative for first-generation students. It reinforced the importance of getting an education in theater. You don't want to be an actor who just, you know, made it by doing a lot of shows. You know, you want to know what you're doing and know the art. See how a summer theater program at Riverside City College is helping to recruit the next generation of theater students. And discover how San Diego City College launched an urban farming program in the heart of a major city. It's all next on Inside California Education Community Colleges. Inside California Education, Community Colleges, is made possible by College Futures Foundation believes nothing is more transformative for individuals and our society than an educational opportunity. We partner with organizations and leaders across California to help students earn college degrees, regardless of zip code, skin color, or income. More information at collegefutures.org. We're in beautiful Quincy, California. It's in Plumas County. It's northeastern California. Feather River College has been here since 1968. Just celebrated our 50th anniversary at Feather River College. We have a very strong reputation as the, as the horse college. We joke and say it's the, you ever seen a horse that's been to college? <laughs> when the law was finally passed, that allowed community colleges to have bachelor's degrees. The rule was we could not duplicate any program that a California State University offered. 15 colleges were allowed to offer a bachelor's degree. And we submitted the Bachelor of Equine and Ranch Management as a proposal to the state. We had to start the curriculum from zero. We didn't have any curriculum for a four-year degree. So what we did is we just said, well, let's take a job description of what we would like our students to be able to do. You had to know something about cattle, and you had to know something about horses. I originally wanted to go to Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo, but they didn't have really any majors that I was interested in and after doing research and FRC kept popping up and I clicked on it they had a big flyer announcing that they were awarded the ability to offer their new bachelor degree program starting in 2016 which is when I was heading off to college so I came and checked out the college and looked at the town and everything fell into place from there so today we'll uh, go ahead and we'll process the calves that we have we have 25 calves to process my name is J.P. Tanner. I am the beef professor for Feather River College. Okay. Any questions? Now that we're, we're dialing in on careers, um, once they get to their junior and senior year, we want to make sure that they are dialed into their area that they want to have a career in long term. So like at those points, as I'm just getting all this into all here, I don't have to worry. It's changed the way I teach as an instructor, because now I need to be more in depth in, in my courses. They have classes on packing. They have classes like working with cows and they have classes where you're riding and that was all very new to me. In the last year, I jumped more to the cow side of things. The skin are the same. Horses will always be in my life, but they will be in my life as a hobby. And I'm very interested in cows and the production and maintenance and management of cattle. And honestly, I love anything with cows. <laughs> we could just bring these three. Yeah, I want to become a ranch manager, but after school, I'm going to go start working on a ranch and working my way up. I'm from Bend, Oregon. Uh, I was born on a farm and I came here to play baseball and then I was just planning on doing the two year associate's degree. And then I finally realized that 
they're offering a four-year program in ranch management, and that's something I want to do. So decided that that's what I want to do. The biggest question that, that, that's probably asked me by parents, by students when they come here is, okay, what can my son or daughter do if they go here? And what, what can they do if they're here for two years and what can they do for four years? And of course, my standard response back to that, well, that's upon the student. We had a graduate last year who got hired up by Ted Turner's ranch in Montana. He's the largest landowner in Montana and has one of the largest ranches in the United States, so he's a manager up there. We've had students open up horse therapy programs. One has a riding program for severe mental or brain injuries. Uh, there's other ones that have been doing agricultural lending. We've had people work with beef cattle. We actually have graduates that are doing training programs for horses, how to train horses as well. <laughs> Throughout the country, many community colleges have begun to offer bachelor's degrees, so this is something new for California. So these 15 programs were created to not only test to see how it would work in California, but also to give us the opportunity to expand our reach, to help communities, to help regions satisfy the demand for technical expertise. And hopefully we'll begin expanding beyond those 15 in the near future. Oh, yes, huh, kids, huh, kids. Huh. Well, I'm from Brentwood, California. I've never been a big city person, and I've always loved the mountains, and it just was the combination of horses and mountains, and it was just felt right to me. My two siblings before me, they spent a lot of money in college, and the lower cost is great help, especially when you're trying to do other things and balance being a student. I don't think everyone can afford to pay thousands of dollars per year to go to college, and it's something that I wanted to do and it's something that's important is to get a degree, but it's not affordable for everyone. And this is so important because I can get my four year degree, but at a price that is, is not gonna cost me a lot in the future, but it's just so beneficial. The way the program was designed, the total cost would be under $10,000. That includes all four years. That's not per year, that's for all four years. I am getting, in my opinion, a better education, more up my alley, like with a lot more things that I'm interested in for a small, small fraction of the cost. Um, and plus, I'm getting more one-on-one -on -one time with each of the instructors. That's a huge difference from having a class filled with 50 kids to 10. So we are able to um, advance our skills a lot better, a lot faster, and get more one-on-one -on -one time. And in my opinion, I'm getting a better education than I could have gotten anywhere else. I get to do stuff that I never thought I'd be able to do. Work with mares, breed horses, halt or break, you know, babies. Just all kinds of stuff that I never thought I'd be able to do, but this has given me that opportunity, and I'm just so thankful for it. The pilot program allowing 15 community colleges to offer bachelor's degrees will expire in 2026 unless new legislation is signed. In the meantime, students can earn four-year degrees in areas that include airframe manufacturing technology, dental hygiene, mortuary science, and respiratory care. It was just amazing to hear that I wasn't alone. Not alone. Instead, surrounded by fellow students, experiencing the same new and challenging chapter in their lives. That's what this first-gen circle is all about at El Camino College in Torrance. Everyone here is the first in their family to attend college. Saranda Bray leads the group. When I was a first-gen student, there weren't first-gen initiatives like this, and so sometimes I did feel like, oh, you know, this is just me having this experience. Everyone else has it together, they know. <laughs> um, but I think it's really beautiful when you get to see, like, oh my gosh, we are, we're all part of this together. As first-gen students, like, we have mad skills, y'all. <laughs> we come with so many strengths and so many things that we've learned growing up, even. Saranda is part of a campus-wide initiative helping first-generation students navigate the often intimidating college experience. Experience. Help includes early steps like signing up for classes, scheduling office hours with professors, even securing financial aid and career counseling. Perhaps most important, quelling any signs of discouragement or self-doubt. What I share with students is checking those negative voices that sometimes creep 
into our psyche and also reminding them like you earn this like everything that you have like you've earned you've worked very hard like it's not luck so it was hard you know in the beginning especially once again you feel lost you feel like an imposter you feel like you're not good enough but i'm grateful for the resources i have it's amazing to have this community and these people who are going through the same thing as you El Camino College has almost 30,000 full and part-time students. More than half of them are first generation. It's a percentage similar to many other community colleges throughout California. For first generation students, and I'm one myself, so I could speak to it firsthand, uh, the language of higher education is, in some cases, foreign. It's a foreign language, so we have to somehow demystify the college going process. Many students have a deficit mindset. I'm coming in with all these barriers and how can I think I'll be successful? I don't belong here, this isn't for me. Dina Maloney, president of El Camino College, says the idea for a major first gen initiative began with her faculty members. Maloney, also a first generation college graduate, embraced the plan and soon enough, so did the entire campus. It turns out that almost 120 of our faculty members are first-generation students. We help students see we were first-gen. At one point, we were in your shoes. And look how far we've gone, and that's how far you can go if you want. My career goal is to open up a bakery. It helped me to know that it wasn't alone, that I wasn't the only student feeling like this, and it provided a community. And for me, that was a huge, huge thing. What you have here? Daryl Thompson is another first-generation college graduate and one of the professors who helped create the program. He Good. often brings that shared experience into his instruction. In this class, he's invited students to bring in images they've captured, reflecting some of their challenges. That the lack of time that students have, especially first-generation students. Being a teacher is so rewarding on its own, but to transform those lives that didn't think they were transformable or thought maybe they weren't qualified or it wasn't meant for them. It's a really wonderful feeling and it's super fulfilling. For my mom I put high school or equivalent. Brian Gomez went straight from a small town high school to UC Merced, but the adjustment was difficult and he dropped out. Now he says he's much more confident as a student and after finishing at El Camino, he plans to return to the university, get a master's degree and become a college counselor. They've helped me out so much. If it wasn't for them, you know, reaching out and picking me up, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I would love to do that for other people in the future. Studies show programs like this help students stay in school and often graduate sooner. Because of its success, El Camino was the only community college receiving top honors from First Forward, a nationwide program started by the nonprofit Center for First Generation Student Success. I would love to see all 115 community colleges in the state of California develop a first-gen initiative and based on our formula or tailoring it to your own campus. All students should be, have access to these kinds of resources. And if we can make that happen, it'll be fabulous. These students say college offers a chance to change the trajectory of their own lives and that of their families, even their communities. With knowledge comes power, new economic opportunities, and a better future. You know, I see that there's other people that are also going through similar things as me, and it made me feel confident as a student because now I feel ready for the world. If somebody tells you you can't do it, prove them that you can do it, and you are capable, and you're good enough, and you can do it. Still ahead on Inside California Education, Community Colleges. Dig into an urban farming program that's offered in one of the state's biggest cities, San Diego. But first, a theater program at Riverside City College is drawing high schoolers from around the region for its popular summer program. Theater is such a nice way to bring people together in a community. It, it sparks people wanting to work together and people getting along and it's just a really healthy environment that I think 
people need to have in their lives in some way, shape, or form. Jose Gonzalez is a student at Riverside City College, working toward his transfer degree so he can someday be a theater teacher himself. Like many students, he found his way here through the stage, specifically the college's summer conservatory program. It's designed for local middle and high school students. It's a six week program and over the course of that six weeks, we teach a kid how to put on a show. The middle school and high school kids act as the ensemble and the college kids are kind of the equity actors. Okay, reset, top of show, here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Theater chair Jody Julian created the summer conservatory program to keep teenagers busy during the summer months. But it's turned into a powerful recruiting tool for Riverside City College, showing local students that the community college has a theater program as impressive as those at larger institutions. Not a lot of kids can afford those big four-year colleges at first, so these two-year programs really need to step up and really be exciting for them um, as they would be going to USC or UCLA. I think the problem with a lot of kids who come to community college is that they have the preconceived notion that community college isn't good. And I don't believe in that. I believe that all school is good. And so I think it depends on the student. I think if you're willing to push yourself and you have the drive to get the work done, then you're going to succeed wherever you go. And that's why I love this program, because the, the kids in it and the community is so fantastic that it makes you want to work harder. It makes you want to be better. There's nobody who can't act. There's nobody who can't succeed in college. And our faculty and our staff, I would say, has a unique ability to bring out that potential in every student from every background who comes here. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Evil. What's everyone today? This summer's program has about 100 participants of all ages. Today, the cast is rehearsing for its upcoming performance of The Wiz, a unique take on The Wizard of Oz. Thanks to you, child, we're free! I'm playing Dorothy Gale. She is a little farm girl from Kansas who bumps her head and kind of just grows from this little girl into mentally an adult. Within a week of getting my role, I had to be completely off book. I didn't know it would be so fast paced, but I've grown quite accustomed to it. And I, I just think I've grown as an actor for it. Growing your craft is the main focus here. Whether you're a talented high school actor like Julianne or a college student learning set design, those who go on to enroll in Riverside City College can earn technical theater certificates, musical theater certificates, or transfer degrees. I really encourage them to get these certificates and go work for a little while until they know for sure which college or which path they want to take. So we have a lot of kids that are working, doing national tours, are working at Disney, Knott's Berry Farm, Universal Studios. They want to complete something. So the certificates are really great and really easy to obtain if they stay with us for two years. Thank you. From my background, I wasn't able to afford going straight to a four year. Um, so when I came to RCC, I had heard that they have a good arts program and I immediately walked into Jody Julian's office and I sat down and was like, what do I, what, what classes do I take? What do I need to do? For students like Julianne Riddle, the community college system is an ideal place to test the waters, to explore careers in theater, to see how she can turn her dreams into reality. All our directors here treat this program like a professional program because that's what we're trying to go into. So I think that draws high school students in because, you know, we're not just doing, oh, we're just a community college theater. It's, no, when you come here, you're going to be taught how to, how to be trained like a professional and how you're going to be treated when you do professional theater. And that's really attractive to young theater students like me and like all these high school students here. 
What we're trying to do through this activity and through so many other opportunities to bring on thousands of students from throughout the community, we're saying that they matter. We're saying that this is their home and they will succeed here. What can you do with a theater degree? Some occupations include actor, playwright, teacher, stage manager, costume and set design, and arts administration. In the middle of the second largest city in the nation's most populous state, one thing you might not expect to see is a farm. All right, groups, please test the moisture level and let me know if your beds are the correct moisture level for tillage. We are at uh, Seeds at City Urban Farm. Seeds at City Urban Farm is the outdoor lab for the Sustainable Urban Agriculture Program at City College. This outdoor lab is one of three plots at San Diego City College dedicated to the school's Sustainable Agriculture Program. Combined, the plots make up about an acre where students get hands-on experience while working toward an associate degree or certificate. You know that 6.2 to 6.8 is prime. That's what you want for vegetable crops. Classes within the Sustainable Agriculture Program cover everything from soil science to vegetable production to food preservation. Typically our classes, we start with a lecture um, and then we get our garden gloves and our big sun hats and we go to one of three farm sites that are on the campus. On a day-to-day -day basis, we do transplanting, we do weeding, we do bed prep. It adds a lot of real-world connection to what we're talking about in the classroom. It gives them a, a lot of experience in it. Um, and then in some of our classes, we really focus on skills building because it is a career technical education program. So it's really important to have this space so that students can build the skills they need to be able to work in agriculture in the future. Those skills can translate to a variety of careers from the culinary arts to insect biology. For me personally, I want to educate younger children and our future generations. Rosie O'Brien already has a four-year degree in sustainability and turned to this program as a way to get some practical experience. I'm really passionate about having the knowledge for myself of how to grow fruits and vegetables and just become more sustainable as a person overall. For Mike Blakely, it's part of a viticulture apprenticeship program through his employer. It's also a way to expand his culinary knowledge. I've been working in restaurants and bars like forever and I'm familiar with like food and I thought I knew something about food but then like for example there's a plant right over there that's fennel and I had no idea what fennel was as a plant. I've only seen it on a plate. And for Dominique Blanche, it's a way to recover from the emotional scars that came with his previous career as a combat systems technician in the U.S. Navy. Getting out of the military, I was looking for something that was somewhat therapeutic that would, you know, give me something back to deal with, you know, the issues that I was dealing with as far as my disabilities. He hopes to start a small business focused on sustainable agriculture, as well as a nonprofit that would allow other veterans to experience the healing he's found through farming. It motivates me to be better, but it also gives me an opportunity to like find community and coming here every day gives me like something to be motivated and happy to do every single day. So if everybody could grab two stakes, measure out each end of your bed to be two feet so we have that. Professor Aaron McConnell the hopes the program continues to attract students with diverse backgrounds, including those from urban environments where farms are mostly foreign. A lot of San Diego, especially areas like southeastern San Diego, are what we call food deserts or food swamps, actually. So it's really important on the in those areas for people to start to learn how to grow their own food, maybe get involved in a community garden to try and improve and increase the availability of local produce and produce in those, those areas. City College officials hope this small plot of land, once a grassy area adjacent to a parking lot, can serve as an example of how urban farming can happen anywhere. Even though there's a land issue in San Diego, in particular downtown, um, there are pockets of space just like this one where you can grow enough produce for maybe a neighborhood or a restaurant or a small store. Money earned through harvesting these fruits and vegetables goes back into the program and also helps with advancing the mission of the college. City College's commitment to social justice 
and uh, environmental sustainability is embedded in our mission. And this program really supports that um, by giving people the opportunity to be self-sufficient, healthy, uh, environmentally conscious. Students say the time they've spent in this outdoor lab has definitely made them more environmentally conscious and more committed to pursuing their goals with the knowledge that sustainable farming is crucial to our future. The more people we have, the more land we need to live on and we're not getting any more land. And so what we're learning here is how to make small spaces super productive. And I think that's really not just relevant, but like super necessary these days. That's it for this edition of Inside California Education Community Colleges. If you'd like more information about the program, log on to our website, insidecaled.org. You can watch stories from all of our shows, and you can connect with us on social media. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Inside California Education. As first-gen students, like, we have mad skills, y'all. <laughs> we come with so many strengths. If everybody could grab two stakes, measure out each end of your bed to be two feet, so we have that. Inside California Education, Community Colleges, is made possible by College Futures Foundation believes nothing is more transformative for individuals and our society than an educational opportunity. We partner with organizations and leaders across California to help students earn college degrees, regardless of zip code, skin color, or income. More information at collegefutures.org.